good morning, Pastor Eric from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Redmond. We are here on our Monday prayer journal time looking at the uh, second time with that prayer that Reinhold Niebuhr prayed at the end of a sermon, just a regular prayer that became famously known as the Serenity Prayer. Um, it's a prayer where acceptance for things you can't change is one of the first things. God, please grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change. There's such wisdom in that, just accepting the things you can't change. That doesn't mean that you don't grieve something terrible that has happened. Accidents, cancer, whatever that might be, can be a tremendous burden on your heart. You can't change some of that. Um, you grieve it. It hurts your heart every time you think about it when someone is sick or dying or whatever that might be. Um, and yet, at some point, you just we just all need to realize, you know, there's nothing I can do about that, and I can fret, 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 fret. Or I can pray, dear God, give me some guidance, give me some strength, give me some way to make it through this. I can't change it, but God, I'm really struggling. Help me out of this pit of despair I'm in, um, which is what the Psalms say many times, help me through this. Um, and yet there comes a point of accepting some of those things that you can't change that become very important. Serenity prayer is prayed almost as often as probably the Lord's prayer is by Christians or by people in recovery. It wasn't originally meant to address people who are in recovery, just simply it was prayed as a prayer by a seminary professor to end a sermon, but it's incredibly insightful for how we can learn to live with serenity and peace. I'll I posted it as you've seen in the uh, in the blog. So let's think about that. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I cannot change whatever it is with in our lives that we cannot change over which we have or no control. There's some sense that trusting God means that. I can't control it. God maybe can't change it. However, God can change me to help me accept those things I cannot control. God, grant me the courage to change the things I can. That's an equally powerful part of this prayer. We should be bold and confident when we need to make those changes that we can make. I often think that um, we abdicate responsibility for things we can change, things we can change and we figure, well, we're victims. We will outsort that to someone else. We'll just kind of keep in that misery. Sometimes misery is a really good partner and we'd rather be in misery than change the things we can. If something is bothering us and we can change it and we don't, then the problem becomes something that is self-induced, kind of a stab wound into the heart. If we can change it, but we choose not to, and it's totally under our control to change it, those are things we should change. God calls us to love, and if we love one another and if we love ourselves, which is what Jesus says we should also do, we should have the courage enough to be bold enough to change the things we can. And then that third part, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right, right. The wisdom to know the difference um, means that we have to decide what we can change and what we can't change and accept the things we can't change and change the things we can. The wisdom to know the difference. Asking God, for the wisdom to understand what it is that we can change and what it is that we can change, and we just need to release that to God and ask God to help us to deal with those things we cannot change, but then the courage and strength and the boldness to change those things we can. And the time for that is now. I love how he says, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. 
living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. Um, you know, we love to look ahead and plan and all that stuff. We love to look back and regret. What if we just enjoyed the moment that God has given us? What about this time that we have right now, this day, this moment? I mean, the, tomorrow's past. Uh, uh, to, uh, yesterday is past, tomorrow is not yet here. What we have now is the present. That's why it's called a present, because it's given to us right now. That, that mindfulness of being in the moment with people is so important. Cherish every moment. Cherish every moment. Otherwise, you miss out on life, and it slips through our fingers like days in the sand or whatever it is that soap opera was. Um, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace means taking it as Jesus did in this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Taking it as it is. Many people are, including me, are kind of control freaks. You want to control every moment of every day. And if you do that, you end up falling short so many times because the days don't happen exa exactly the way that we want them. But hardships are sometimes struggles that we have sometimes are the pathway to peace because once we get through them, we can look back and realize, yeah, it is the peace of God that does pass all understanding. It's the peace that goes hand in hand with our trust in God, hand in hand with our trust in God. When you experience that kind of faith, uh, that kind of peace, you know that your faith is growing because you're relying on God to help you make it through every day of your life. Trusting, it goes on, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. If I surrender to his will, God will do that. If you trust God to do what God has promised, God will come through in your life as to what he's promised. Maybe not in the time frame, that always frustrates me. Maybe not in the time frame that we want. Because I have pretty specific time frames for God that I have to share you a secret. God doesn't always work according to my timetable. God doesn't work according to my day planner. But when you let God take the driver's seat rather than be your co-pilot, you'll see that God will help you end up just exactly where God wants you to be. And finally, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. What a great way to say God loves you and wants the best for you. God wants a relationship with you that's real and, and personal. God wants a life for you that is full of great happiness and joy. And God's intent is to fill our lives with joy and overflowing but sometimes those difficult things we go through help refine us like gold is refined and the stuff floats to the top and is skimmed off. Their impurities kind of get burned out, but they get burned out. That's the problem. That's the pain. That's what we don't want. We don't want pain and suffering, but sometimes it helps purify us to follow God more closely and lovingly. So, I put this um, longer, it's called a serenity prayer, it's really not, it's from Reinhold Niebuhr, and a serenity prayer is the beginning part of that, but um, if you can print that off and just read it every morning and evening, just pray it when you need peace. Pray it when you need peace, because peace is a fleeting thing that we want but it's fleeting sometimes and it slips through our hands. Pray it when you have trouble accepting something. Pray it when you have a battle in your mind, whether you're going to be in control of your life or whether you're going to release that control of God. Pray it when you crave peace. Pray it as we start to think about coming out of this pandemic. Pray it when you need to be reminded of God's love for you. And let's close this time, I'll read that again. And if you can remember it, say some of those words with me. Let's pray. 
God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good week. Log in on Wednesday and Sunday. Keep up on the uh, prayer journal, and I look forward to talking with you again. You take care. Bye-bye.